Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I have a rant for you today. But before we jump on in, let me say thank you for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell so you get all up to the minute updates, and hit up all of our other social media channels down below. Come on now, podcast. Come on now, pod on X. Come on now, podcast on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Let's jump right on up, right on in on the topic at hand. And I know I'm a little bit behind as this was done a couple of days ago where this statement was released on the 27th, which was Friday, and today is now the 29th. But you know what? <clears throat> I'm a college football guy, and I was watching college football all day yesterday. Some of y'all may have jumped on with us during our live Colorado UCF watch party. Reality is we should have done an Alabama-Georgia watch party because the finish of that Alabama-Georgia game was absolutely insane. But let's jump on in now and talk about this uh, topic at hand, which is the WNBA PA with their absolutely outrageous. Well, I mean, let me repeat absolutely outrageous statement that it made on Friday. Now, let me give you a little background on myself. I have a degree in print journalism. I've covered sports professionally for many years. I kind of left it in about 2013. But I covered Miami Hurricanes football, Miami Hurricanes basketball, high school sports, some professional sports, covered for the Miami Herald, for the Sun Sentinel, other newspapers nationwide on a freelance basis when they would come down here. Um, inside the U.com, 247 Sports, Florida Kids. I don't know if it was ORG or Florida Kids.com, whatever it was called. Kane Sport. I'm not kidding. I'm sorry, not Kane Sport. Kane's Time. So, Scout, I did do some stuff with Rivals. I mean, you name it, I've written. And so that's my background. So that's my so that's my background. So I have a degree in this, and I take journalism seriously. Now, the podcast world is totally different. You can say a whole lot of things you can't otherwise say when you are a print journalist. You, you know, you do have to dot your I's and cross your T's, but a lot of this stuff is opinion. And journalism is not an opinion. Journalism is reporting. And this is the thing that exists in the WNBA. They want to have all the bells and whistles. They want to have all the money that comes with it. But they don't want to have the accountability that comes with notoriety, coverage, and actual true journalism. But this statement that they released on Friday was absolutely outrageous. And it just shows how I can't even I can't even figure the words out. It just shows how tone deaf they are to what they really to what they they clearly don't know anything about, but I'm going to show you what they said. <clears throat> So as you can see here, I'm oh, sorry, let's do it like this, right here. As you can see right here, you have a statement from the WNBA this week and a message on behalf of the 144. First of all, whoever is in charge in the executive director of the WNBA, we'll find out in a minute. But part of your job as an association is to give some level of guidance to your membership <clears throat> and not just come off the cuff with absolutely outrageous and ridiculous statements. As you can see behind me, I got football on, I got baseball, I got sports on. It's, it's Sunday, man. So we got sports going on in the background, but it's absolutely ridiculous to see the type of things that come out of people that should actually take the time to think before they speak. This week was dedicated to celebrating and amplifying Asia, Caitlin, Dijanae, and Nafisa for their hard work and truly exceptional performances all season long. We were not going to distract from their successes, 
nor would we dim the glow of the spotlight they had centered them. They have earned that focus and celebration, but we will take this moment now to stand up for them and the rest of our members, every single one of them, because we call BS. Well, <clears throat> let's start off on that first screen. Asia Wilson got named WNBA MVP. DJ Carter got named WNBA Most Improved Player, even though she darn sure didn't deserve it. De'Erica Hamby was far more improved. Kennedy Carter was far more improved, but that's for another conversation. Nafisa Collier gets named WNBA Defensive Player of the Year. Tell me what Caitlin, what tell me what award Caitlin Clark got. Oh, wait. Oh, what was it the AP Rookie of the Year Award? Because we're still waiting for you to announce her as the WNBA Rookie of the Year. I've seen reports that she's been named the WNBA Rookie of the Year. But right now, if you go to the WNBA website, there's no mention of Caitlin Clark being named WNBA Rookie of the Year. So what exactly are you going to celebrate Caitlin Clark? I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm genuinely asking this question. When will you celebrate Caitlin Clark winning WNBA Rookie of the Year? When will you even announce it? Why does the MVP award come out before the Rookie of the Year, before the Most Improved Player, before the Defensive Player of the Year? Typically, they save the MVP for last. But I guess this is the WNBA, so they – do things in a more backwards type of way. <clears throat> but they still sure as heck have not announced who the WNBA Rookie of the Year was. So you wanted to celebrate them, but no, now you're going to take the glow off of them, take the spotlight off of them, and stand up for the rest of our members. Stand up for what? <clears throat> but let's continue. To the uh, – that's, uh, that's slide two. To unprofessional members of the media like Christine Brennan, you're not fooling anyone. <clears throat> that so-called interview in the name of journalism was a blatant attempt to bait a professional athlete into participating in a narrative that is false and designed to fuel racist, homophobic, and misogynistic vitriol on social media. You cannot hide behind your tenure. Let's, let's review that. Christine Brennan is a 40-year journalist. 40. Last I checked, she's a woman. I don't know if she's part of the LGBTQ community. I don't think it really matters if she is or is not. But what exact, what exact interview in the name of journalism was a blatant attempt to bait a professional athlete into participating in a narrative that is false and designed to fuel racist, homophobic, and misogynistic vitriol? Please do tell. You mean the actual most basic question that could possibly be asked? Did you I poke? I gouge Caitlin Clark on purpose. Did you know you did it? You were seen laughing with Marina Mabry later on. Were you making fun of it? <clears throat> Here's my problem. The WNBA doesn't want journalists. The WNBA wants panderers. The WNBA wants people to promote their agenda. They want them to promote their call. They want them to promote their activism. Ladies, this is a sport. No one watches sports to get inundated with politics, with activism, with what's going on in the rest of the country, the rest of the world, because the reality is people watch sports to escape reality. And that is why so many people walked away 
and stopped watching the NBA and the NFL during Colin Kaepernick and the NBA during all the other stuff that they wanted to do. Because people like to escape. Sports is an escape. If When you went to movies, every movie was filled with a political agenda behind it. And you had to listen to that political agenda and that political narrative for the duration of the movie while watching the movie. You probably would stop watching movies because it would get really irritating. If you had to go to Disney World and get a political agenda, which they are doing at Disney World now, don't get me started there. But if you got to go anywhere you go as a political agenda, you can't just go and watch a show, watch a sport, wa watch a, a play, watch whatever you want, any form of entertainment. And I got to be filled with rhetoric about homophobia and racism and misogyny. First off, Christine Brennan's a woman, not a man. So what misogyny is, what is misogynistic? I, I mean, maybe I don't know the definition of the word misogyny because I, I, I don't know. Let me, let me look it up because... <clears throat> Let's take a look. A form of sexism that is defined as hatred, prejudice, or contempt towards women or girls. I know what it means. How is a woman pushing a misogynistic agenda as a journalist? <clears throat> it was a simple question that was asked of DeJanae Carrington. Because you know what? At the end of the day, there were videos populating Everywhere. And if national media puppets like ESPN don't want to talk about it and they want to ignore it, then well, maybe, maybe, just maybe, someone needs to talk about it. Thank God the USA Today has the stones to talk about it. She asked her two questions. Two not three, not four and a half, but two questions. She asked her the initial question, and DJ Carrington's outrageous response was that she didn't know. She, how would I know? No one. That doesn't sound like that would it be me, blah, blah, blah. But at no point <clears throat> did she ever say, no, I did not do it on purpose. No, I did not do it on purpose. No, I did not do it on purpose. And I am sorry that it happened. I did not mean to poke her in the eye. I've seen the videos. And we know she's seen the videos. We know she's seen the videos. We have to stop lying to ourselves about if she's seen them. Of course she saw them. So we've seen the you've seen the video. You you you, you I didn't know I did. I apologize. I'm hope I hope she's all right. Uh, definitely never intended to do that. No, her response was one of nonsense. <clears throat> so let's remember what she actually said. Let's remember what she said. And I'm going to replay it for you so you so you get that refresh re, that refresher on what she said. So this is what DJ Carrington said. Let's remind you. Did you uh when you went and uh kind of swatted at Caitlin, did you intend <laughs> to hit her in the eye, and, and if so, could you just, or, or, or if not, either way, could you talk about what happened on that play? I just, I don't even know why I would intend to hit anybody in the Let's start off with the question, did you or did you not intend to hit Caitlin Clark in the eye? It's a simple question. It doesn't require a detailed response. It's yes or no. Instead, you get this touching my hair again. I've talked to this in my previous one, touching my hair. And I, I have this look of like, Oh my God, can't, I cannot believe you actually would ans ask me that, ask me that question. Oh my God. I'm so offended, but she doesn't say anything. She says, I don't know. What Let's repeat it. I just, I don't even know why I would intend to hit anybody in the eye. I don't know why I would intend to hit anybody in the eye. Well, I don't know about you, Dijonay, but there are plenty of people in life that intend to hit people in the eye for a variety of reasons. 
It's typically not in reference to basketball, but there are plenty of reasons to hit someone in the eye. So you saying, I don't know why, what, what does that mean? It doesn't mean you didn't do it on purpose. You didn't answer the question, but we'll let, it, we'll let this continue. Uh, that doesn't even make sense to me. <clears throat> no, I didn't. I didn't know I hit her, actually. No, she says, I didn't know I hit her. Then she goes off and say, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know I hit her, actually. Even though it's been now two days at this point since this video has gone viral about you looking like you clearly intended to eye gouge her. But even all that said, even if you didn't know you hit her in the eye, you knew you hit her somewhere. And the fact that she was on the ground probably would have given you an indicator that you did something that clearly hurt this woman. Or maybe you're the only one that lives in this state of delusion that doesn't seem to know that. But let's go continue. Um, I was trying to make a play on the ball and I guess I followed through and I hit her. So obviously it's never intentional. That's not even like the type of player that I am. Um, so yeah. Did you and Marina kind of laugh about it afterwards? It looked like you. there was later on in the game they caught you guys laughing about it. No, I just told you I didn't even know I hit her. So I can't laugh about something I didn't know happened. So let's talk about this thing again. Let's jump into the next point is that obviously Dijanae Carrington is in her little tone deaf world. She was asked two questions, nothing more. And she halfway answered them, halfway didn't answer it. But yet they were joking about what was done and they were joking about the day of the game and they were joking about the next game as well. So you were caught on camera multiple times with Marina Mabry joking about what happened. You can go back and say, oh, this is about Carmelo Anthony's three-point celebration, whatever. People celebrate on the on the court, not on the sideline like that. But okay, you can you can continue the, the lie. But this was the question that was asked. This is a basic question. And now they're sitting here saying, instead of demonstrating the cornerstones of journalism ethics, like integrity, objectivity, and a fundamental commitment to truth, you have chosen to be indecent and in, downright insincere. No, she's actually the only one with integrity in the room because no other journalist asked the question. And the fact that that exists is a problem. Have you ever been to a press conference? Have you ever seen the questions that get asked of, asked of NBA players, NFL players, Major League Baseball players? They're real questions. Not this nonsense that you want to do a pander show and it's everything sweet and you know, days, roses and daisies. You get real questions when you do things that look to be intentional. Thank God. Because you know what? DJ Carrington to this day still has not said sorry. She never will because it was intentional. But you're going to make this statement as, a, as an association? I have a degree in it. I can promise you her integrity is well above board. It's y'all who lack integrity. You want to control the narrative. You want to control the message that you want to control. You want to control your activism. Newsflash, people. If you have new fans, not th these new fans aren't interested in your activism. They're interested in watching a sport, namely Caitlin Clark. Your activism, that's your problem. You want to know why your league stinks? Why your league has got no viewership? It's because of the activism in that league. It's exhausting to fans beyond the fact that most, you know, 80% of it is slanted to the LGBTQ community who won't even watch the sport. That's what makes them the WNBA so freaking hilarious to me is that <clears throat> the, the league is 80% gay, yet gay people don't watch this sport all that often. You, you would think that they would have millions and millions in the LGBTQ community who watch this sport. They don't. They don't. They're not. The largest section of fans right now, the WNBA, it's children who are watching Caitlin Clark and men. Men and kids. Because women don't go to games in a lar in large part. How go to a dub, go to an NBA game. Look at how many women are in the crowd. Women who are there are typically with men. They're not going there with a group of women. You'll see a group of men. And then you may see women with men. But generally speaking, you don't have some big group of women going to an, an NBA game. Please. You have abused your privileges and do not deserve the credentials issued to you. Man, shut up. 
Y'all don't deserve the basketball given to you. Your money losing league for 27 years. You don't deserve to even be on a television screen right now. The only reason you're on is because of Caitlin Clark is no one else otherwise cares about your damn sport. Deserve the credentials. Man, that woman has paid more dues in her in her field than any woman in the WNBA has paid in that field. I promise you. Because you want to know what a man a man league is? Journalism of professional sports. Go look at the amount of men in journalism, in sports. The battles and the barriers that someone like Christine Brennan has had to overcome to get to this point in her career? And you're going to sit here and question this woman? This woman has gone through more than any player in the WNBA right now. <clears throat> right now. Because guess what? She's not. You're not fighting men to play basketball. You're fighting against, against your people who are you, women. It's women in a women's league. She is a woman in a man's league, actually, if you want to be real. Sports journalism is a man's league. ESPN does its best to massage and all that crap. But look, take, a look at, take a look at who does the game calls for NFL. How many women do you see on NFL game calls? How many women do you see on Major League Baseball game calls? There might be a few. And I don't mean I don't mean the, the sideline reporter. I mean the person in the box, the play-by-play, the analyst. There's only a couple of women who do men's sports. Doris Burke is one of them. But you're not going to find a woman doing analysis of an NFL football game in a box. You're not going to find women typically doing analysis of a baseball game in a box. I know there was a one, the softball player, I forget her name, who did it for ESPN. But ESPN has been pushing, trying so hard to, 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 to ice men out of this business. It's crazy to watch it. You know, that's why they keep on pushing. You want to have real conversations about WNBA basketball? Put some men up there to talk about it because the women – are not talking about it from a sincere and ethically an, eth- an ethical ethical way. They're doing it from a compromised way because they want to keep a narrative that they want to keep. Whereas men will watch this game and say, wow, she's good. She's good. She's trash. The same way they treat men, they'll treat women. But we have to treat women's basketball players with kit white gloves. You are certainly not entitled to any interviews with the members of this union or any uh, any other athlete in sport. Those credentials mean you can ask anything. What? She did. She asked a simple question. What did you think about it when what did you think when the journalists went into the I'd like to know why why they didn't give a statement about how when that journalist or blogger or podcaster asked Angel Reese about who she's voting for. <laughs> And if she basically give Kamala Harris an endorsement during a basketball practice post game press post practice press conference interview session, why didn't you have a problem there? You know why you had a problem? You actually had a problem with Angel Reese's response because y'all push a narrative. You want to have this narrative continue and continue and continue the way you want it to go, and you'll pick and choose which topics you like and which topics you don't like. But sitting here and telling me that you have, yeah, you have, you can ask whatever you want. Exactly. But they also mean that you should know the difference between what you should and should not. We see, <clears throat> have y'all been watching these debates or these whatever for politics, for the presidential debate and all that stuff? Can you imagine if they never actually asked them questions? Hey, Donald. Hey, Donald. Tell me how great you are today. Hey, President Trump, tell me how great you are today. Hey, Kamala, tell me how great you are today. Hey, 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 President Trump, tell me how great you're going to make this country. Hey, Kamala, tell me how great you're going to make this country. That's what they want. They want you to tell them how great this league is. If that's what you got for questions, for questions, 
you learn nothing about the WNBA. They don't want to have you. They don't want the tough question. They don't want it. I listened to multiple interviews, these silly postseason, whatever interviews they're doing. And you're, you're hearing the question be, tell me how you've been dealing with the racism in the league. Really? That's the question? Tell me how you, Brittany Griner, have been dealing with the racism in the league. Tell me you, Brianna Stewart, how the racism is in the league. Tell me you, Sabrina Ionescu, how the racism is in the league. And yet you're going to get to hear Brittany Griner tell you about how people are yelling racial slurs at her. Come on. Dude, I got I got season tickets to the Miami Heat. Let's keep it a buck. I sit row nine. Row nine. I am close to the floor. And I have never in my years heard any fan yell a racial slur at a basketball player. And I'm not saying it's never happened, but I have never heard it once at an NBA game. Not one time. The WNBA women have basically conspired together to base to give the same exact answer to the question over and over. These Indiana Fever fans are racist. They're slurring us. Well, why haven't you had any fans th thrown out of the game since they're slurring you? I, I mean, if they're slurring you and calling you the N word or calling you some other uh, a hom a hom a, 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 a not a nice name for homosexuals, what, what, what? Why haven't you had them thrown out of the game? I, I, Alyssa Thomas, why didn't you do it? Brittany Griner, why didn't you do it? Brianna Stewart, why didn't you do it? Sabrina, why didn't you do it? We know why. Because it doesn't exist. It's not happening. People are not buying tickets to sit courtside to slur you. Oh, I'm sorry. The person that damn near got thrown out of the game was a person calling Caitlin Clark the C word and telling her that he hopes she breaks her neck. But it wasn't a slur, so she got to stay. It was just a nasty-ass thing to say. But you're telling me that people have been dropping N-bombs on you during games and you've said nothing? I, I know you want to paint this... I know you want to paint this lying narrative. But miss me with the BS. It's not real. You're making it up completely. And we know it. But the WNBA will put out this, I'm sorry, the, the Players Association will put out this ridiculous statement. Let's continue. Our relationship with the media is a delicate one that we will continue to strengthen because the media is essential to grow in the game. No one knows that better than we do. Clearly, you don't know that. But the players are entitled to better. They are entitled to professionalism. No, what they're getting, what, what, they're, what they want is to have the Monica McNutts, the Chinis, the Pex, the, the Molly Q's, the, the Drea Carters, who constantly puff them up and pump them up and tell you how great they really are and how amazing they are and how Caitlin stinks and how they're all great and you're ignoring the past and you're not pumping up the, the past and tell us how great the past was. That's what they want. They want the money without the problems. Remember what they said back in the day when, Nor when Notorious Big, more money, more problems. You're gonna have more problems with more money, but the balance is, are the problems the same with all this money as they were when you had no money? So if these were the problems, when you had no money, and these are still the problems when you have money, let's say that raises to here. Your situation is still far better than before. You're going to be questioned. You're going to be called out for 2 of 18. You're going to be called out for 4 of 17. You're going to be called out for missing bunny, bunny layups. You're going to be called out 
for blowing screens. You're going to be called out when you elbow somebody in the face on purpose. You're going to be called out when you eye gouge someone on purpose. You're going to be called out when you commit clear flagrant fouls. The officiating will be called out when it's blatantly biased in one direction. These things will be called out. That's what happens when you have growth of a sport. That is what happens when you want to see things get bigger. You know what happens? When we had 20 subscribers, no one said a word about us. Now that we've crossed 5,000, the name dropping doesn't stop. But we accept it. It's part of what it is. I'm not going to sit here and go cry boo-hoo. Oh, my God, you called me a mean name. Big deal. Oh, no. We got 5,000 subscribers now. We're doing really well. We're continuing to grow. We thank you for that continued support of the channel. But not going to sit here and get worried about if some person says, oh, well, you cuss too much. And if you've noticed, I haven't cussed once in this video so far. I've made a point because I'm trying to not cuss because I don't want to have people not watch because I curse. But you get stuff like that where no one typically generally, if you played sports and you didn't curse in sports, then you never really played sports. If you played sports and your coach never cussed at you, you never played sports. You played rec. You never played competitive sports because competitive sports, coaches cuss. Whether you're in Catholic school or public school, coaches cuss. Coaches will get in your face and say some mean stuff. They will. And you are going to cry about it and go home to mommy and say, oh, they call me a mean name. Oh, my God. Or you didn't buck up and say, yeah, let's go. I mean, I always was taught that if your coach stopped cussing at you and stopped talking to you, that means he gave up on you. So you better be, you better be a lot more happy when your coach is going at you than when he's not. Because the day he stops is the day he, he gave up on you. So you have bigger problems then. However, we we have I, your 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 relationship is delicate. No, it doesn't have to be delicate. It needs to be real. That's what the relationship media is supposed to check you. Podcasts don't check you. Podcasts are fake. Y'all running podcasts, it's fake. Y'all pumping each other up, blowing each other, all that stuff. That's not real. Thank God for media members like Christine Brennan. Thank God. Because without people like her, this would be a puff puff league. By the way, there's a game going on. Are you watching it right now? I can promise you when you go on ESPN.com, it doesn't list the WNBA playoffs as a top game today. Nobody cares. We call on the USA Today to review its principles of ethical conduct for newsrooms and address what we believe is a violation of several core principles, including seeking and reporting the truth. USA Today Sports should explain why a reporter with clear bias and ulterior motives was assigned to cover the league. We also urge the league to review its policies and take measures to prevent such issues protecting the integrity of the game and its players. This is the executive director, Terry Carmichael Jackson. She is an embarrassment. She is an embarrassment. Is that for real? Seeking several corp. Let's go look at Terry Carmichael Jackson's background. Again, I want you to attach this to politics. Attach this same attitude to politics. Because if media members didn't ask Trump questions and media members didn't ask Harris questions, what exactly would you learn about these people? Their questions allow you to learn about them. And you can determine, decide for yourself if they're completely full of crap or not. That's what questions allow. It allows you to tell my truth, whatever that might be. It doesn't make it the truth, but it makes you however you see it. But in what word? <clears throat> Terry Carmichael Jackson. Why in the world is she listed here? 
Oh, she's a lecturer at University of Miami. Oh, Lord have mercy. Can't believe that. I'm a hurricane guy. Don't we should get, don't even get me started. So she's a lawyer. She's a lawyer from Georgetown. Yeah. Oh, she's Jaron Jackson Jr.'s mother. She's Jaron Jackson Jr.'s mother. Okay, with the NBA. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what, for someone who's so smart, that comment was just so stupid. So stupid. And the response from the USA Today, thank God. Thank God they didn't waste time. Thank God they didn't let this crap sit sit by idly because this would have been a disgrace if they had allowed this to sit un, 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 unreplied to. And I thank the USA Today for not screwing their employee. Journalists seek ask questions and seek truth. Exactly. That's what journalists do. They ask questions to seek the truth. At the USA Today... Our mission is to report in an unbiased manner. We reject the notion that the interview per perpetuated any narrative other than to get the player's perspective directly. Exactly. How do you get the player's perspective if no one asked the question? She hasn't commented on social media in two days from the time this happened. So how exactly do you get her get a response from her if no one asked the question? Christine Brennan is well regarded as an advocate for women and athletes, but first and foremost, she's a journalist. Roxana Scott, USA Today Sports Executive Editor. Thank God for you, Roxana Scott. Thank God. Thank God you are there backing your reporter. By the way, I don't know what Roxana Scott is in terms of her background. I'm looking at a photo. I mean, she's a mixture of something. She's not white. I can tell you that. She is not white. If that's a white woman, I don't know what a white woman is. Because I'm looking at her photo right now. She looks like she's about 65 or so. 60. She, may, she looks like she's maybe close to 60. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find out exactly. I just have, I have, I, I, I'm thankful for her. I'm thankful. Because without her, th 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 this, this WNBA BS, come on, dude. Come on. I'm trying to find her age as well. There's no way she's only 50 years old. There's not a chance in hell that she's only 50. Look, I, whatever it is, I appreciate her coming to her, the defense of her reporter because the WNBA wants to have its cake and eat it too. The WNBA wants you to push this, this uh, uh, activist attitude. They don't want Caitlin Clark in the league. They're going to have people like Alyssa Thomas make up stuff, Brittany Griner make up stuff, have, have wimps like Brianna Stewart and Sabrina Ionescu sit here and just mimic whatever's being told to them because here's the thing. You have social media. If you're getting messages of nastiness on social media, you control that. You don't have to accept these messages. You don't have to look at them. You don't have to read them. You don't have to allow yourself to be tagged. You are on social media for clout. You're on social media to make money. That's why you're on social media. Most people are on social media to make money. There's ways to make money doing social media. So they want to make money. They want to make their brands bigger. You don't have to let people tag you. You don't have to let people who are not your followers or friends tag you. You don't have to let a lot of things happen, but you choose to. So while I, I do not doubt that you've probably gotten some nasty messages on social media, I promise you it's not the block. I know it's not the vast majority. I know it's a very, very small minority, in fact. And then Caitlin Clark had her own response to the silliness with, with these, these, you know, with in terms of her response. And of course, people criticized her for how she responded to that too. I'm not, I'm not even going to get into these silly videos of, of exit interviews because they're all a joke to me. Why they're even being published, I don't really know. Nobody cares. <clears throat> but anyhow, 
Good for you, Christine Brennan. I appreciate you. USA Today, I appreciate y'all. WNBA, sorry, you're not going to have your cake and eat it too. Either you get coverage and you get real questions, or you get no coverage and you get no questions. And you're not going to get money with no questions. You're not going to get money without people watching your sport. It's very, very simple. That's all I got. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Am I crazy? Am I not crazy? What are your thoughts of how the USA Today handled this? What are your thoughts of Christine Brennan's questions? What are your thoughts of the WNBA statement? See, I could actually say, what are your thoughts of this ridiculous WNBA statement? No, I'm going to ask you, what are your thoughts of this WNBA statement? Why? Because I allow you to give me your opinion. I am not trying to force you to believe what I believe. I'm not trying to force you to believe that it's a ridiculous opinion. I'll let you make that decision for yourself. That's not what the WNBA wants. The WNBA wants you to agree with them all the time. That's all I got. Be sure to like, subscribe, pound that like button, pound that subscribe button, ring that bell. Come on now.